Right, so right here we've got a uh, Microtik router board 4011 running the latest stable code. Um, it's running IPv6 natively and it has you know a handful of prefixes that it's routing. It's also you know running the route cache print at interval one so that we can see that the route cache is in a pretty steady state uh, for IPv6. It's updating every second. And what we're going to do, as you can see here, the max cache size is uh, you know fairly high, and that's the default hasn't been changed. Um, and what will happen is if you run the cache size up to 102, 4000, uh, it'll get an out of memory error, and it will reboot the device, which is obviously not ideal. So uh, I'm just going to run a real simple command here on this Kali Linux system that is off the shelf. There's no custom code. It's pretty straightforward. Um, if you go and look, you can decipher how it's done. And um, we're going to watch the route cache size increase uh, fairly dramatically in a short period of time. I'm not going to run it up to reboot, but uh, it's definitely possible I've done that. Um, but since um, I don't want to reboot this uh, particular device right now, I'm not going to I'm not going to run it into the red line. So running the scan, and this is a simple scan, right? I've seen this drive other devices of other vendors um, up pretty high, pretty fast, uh, causing CPU spikes and other problems. Uh, this is not necessarily isolated to Microtik, um, but it is definitely something that uh, has a result that's fairly undesirable. So. As you can see, you know, I went from a pretty steady state of about 200 to 300 uh, route cache entries in the V6 route cache, and in a handful of seconds, it's been driven up to you know 16,000 and climbing. You can change this and make it go faster. You can you know run multi-stream, you know multiple instances of it to double and triple it, um, but it should be pretty obvious that you know this really simple one-line command can drive up the route cache size pretty fast and in a pretty dramatic way uh, and allow for the, the out of memory error to be very obtainable. We're gonna go ahead and stop this. All right, you can see it's still it's still climbing. If you let it run, it'll eventually run it out, uh, which I'm not gonna do. Um, there are other ways, like I said, to do this faster. And, um, you know, the point is taken, you know, that it's pretty simple. So right now, you know, I can watch the cache size go down. It'll drop and then it'll drop really dramatically as they time out. See right there, it just dropped down to 5,000 from 16,000 and it'll go back to normal here pretty shortly. Uh, recovery is very quick. That's the other thing I wanted to point out is once these things stop, if it hasn't reached the out of memory error, um, the recovery is fairly fast, right? Which I think is important to note. Uh, you know, this is being portrayed as a catastrophic, you know, event horizon. And while very undesirable, uh, obviously, it's not exactly that bad. I've seen things like this before. And, you know, this is really not that different than standard, you know, low hanging fruit pen testing running state tables out of, you know, uh, stateful middle boxes and other type of devices that have to keep cache entries and state entries and things like that. You know, I've seen problems with this, with NAT tables and other things. It's a solvable problem. Um, and I just wanted to do a quick demo of that so that we understand what is involved. Thanks.